somewhat surprisingly is to find algorithms that will um, work well on a quantum computer and do things, um, give you the full power of the quantum machine. It's a completely new kind of programming. People are still learning how to do it. And there are not that many algorithms which you can prove if you had a quantum computer, you could solve certain problems much faster than on a traditional computer. And so we need much more theoretical computer science research into finding new and useful algorithms. In traditional computer science and in machine learning, there's a lot of heuristics, you know, programs that work but you can't really prove mathematically that they <laughs> provide you an efficient solution. And maybe you can even prove that they can't always work, but for most instances of the problem, they give you a very good, but maybe not perfect solution. And we need to develop quantum computing heuristics in the same way. And that takes experience programming and, and trying to learn how to use these machines. So now that these machines are becoming available for people to play with and, and try to program, I think that progress will come. I always like to remind people that originally the way you program vacuum tube computers in 1940 was you you had these wires and you you plugged them <laughs> you plugged them by hand into uh, what was called a patch panel and you connected different parts together and it was so painful and so difficult that the people who were doing that finally said, this is terrible, there must be a better way to do this. And von Neumann and his collaborators invented the modern von Neumann architecture in which you treat the instructions the same way you treat the data. That revolutionized how we do programming of computers. And you don't make those inventions until you actually sit down with the hardware and see how painful it is to program and you think of some better way to do things. So I think we're just entering the era when people will begin to be able to do that now. Let me give myself an excuse before I answer that question. Think, think about the people who invented quantum mechanics. They were just physicists and chemists and scientists who were just asking curious, they were curious about how the universe worked. They were not thinking about any applications. And yet, because of their inventions in the 20th century, we got the transistor and the laser and the atomic clock. And even the people who invented those technologies had no idea what they would be used for. So the people who soldered together the first transistor at Bell Labs in 1947, I think, you know, it was, it was about this big, it had wires and it was ugly. They could not have predicted that today, the number of transistors that are made in the world every second of every day is more than 20 trillion. It's impossible to foresee that. So with those excuses in mind, I would guess that it will be about 10 years before we have computers that are doing things that for which there's an actual market, for which people would be willing to pay money to you know, get time on these machines. I think five years from now, there are going to be machines which work much better than today and have uh, more qubits 
and more coherence time so that you can run more complicated programs. They're going to first be able to solve the problems of science. That is one thing that quantum computers are very good at is solving the equations of quantum mechanics because they obey them. You know, if you have a drug molecule and it's supposed to to dock, supposed to fit into a target molecule and bind strongly. It's very complicated to figure out what all the electrons are doing that make those chemical bonds. And a quantum computer may be able to do that. Uh, not on a huge scale five years from now, but at an interesting scale. People are already starting to do experiments. And because typically when you're building a new technology in engineering, um, you, under, you overestimate what you can do in the near term and you underestimate the revolutionary changes that will come <laughs> in, in the long term. So I think we don't yet know all of the applications of quantum machines. I mean, the people that invented the transistor didn't realize, you know, that there would be, they would be playing music and <laughs> uh, uh, the laser would be used to send music over the internet and so forth. The actual uses for these devices uh, will probably surprise us. But I think that those surprises will be coming on the time scale of about 10 years. That's my, uh, my prediction. <laughs> In chip design, there's a huge amount of optimization, right? You have to, you have to locate different uh, parts of the processor geographically on the chip. You have to route wires between them and you have thousands or millions of constraints. You know, you, you can't have too many wires. They can't be too long. Uh, you know, I, I can't imagine what all the constraints are, but it's a design problem, which um, cannot, can no longer be carried out by human beings. It has to be done by computer. So you, you cannot build a new computer chip. You can't design a new computer chip without computers. <laughs> it's a kind of interesting situation. So um, one area that quantum computer scientists are interested in is a, a, a looking for quantum advantage in solving these kinds of optimization problems. Almost anything that has economic value can be framed as an optimization problem. You know, uh, choosing a portfolio of stocks or anything in engineering uh, is an optimization subject to constraints. We do not yet have a good theoretical understanding of how to use the power of quantum machines to solve these optimization problems. But people are working on it. In quantum superpositions, you could try out many solutions to the optimization problem at once. That's not exactly right, but there is a possibility that you could gain some speed up in finding very good solutions on a quantum computer. But it's still, I would say, has not been definitively demonstrated, but uh, it could be an important potential application that would be of interest to the chip design engineers.